Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 19th, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. The morning was pretty gloomy with some early rain and then overcast skies. Winds were moderate to strong out of the west or the west-northwest. And in the afternoon, the sun finally came out a little bit with a thinning cloud layer, but it never really caused the flight to pick up. Here we have an adult bald eagle carrying a fish, and if you know what kind of fish it is, leave a comment below. There were a lot of double-crested cormorants gathered out on the rocks of the barrier island. Here's an immature bald eagle that also looks like it has a fish. And notice how large the heads are on bald eagles. Golden eagles have much smaller heads, but on bald eagles they can sometimes stick out quite far past the wings. Here's a morning dove flying past. Here's an osprey, and this is probably one of the ones from one of the local nests. Here we have a red-tailed hawk that was a clear migrant as it streamed high overhead. For red tails, we just look at that classic beautio shape. We see the dark patagial bars and the belly band, and we know it's an adult because of the dark trailing edge to the wings and the red tail. Here we have a Caspian tern looking down as it's hunting. You can see these really long pointed wings that are pale on top. And we also see this huge reddish orange bill with a black cap to the head. Here we have a juvenile bald eagle, so one born last year. Juveniles show a lot of white in the wing pit area, but otherwise mostly dark underneath on the head and on the underside of the body. And we see the pale inner primaries that juveniles show. There weren't many visitors today because of the poor migration conditions, but at one point a gentleman came up who has visited a few times recently, and I got to chat with him the other day, and he was carrying a bag, and he said, I've got some gifts that I'd like to give you. And in the bag were two books, so here's the first one called Birds of Prey. This is from Facts on File. And the second book is A Natural History of Owls by Michael Everett. But the reason he wanted to give me these books is if we open up the owl book, there's a little piece of mail in here from who knows how old. It's from the National Wildlife Federation, and it's addressed to Miss Laura W. Moon, Genesee Ornithological Society, Rochester Academy of Science. And on the paper, it says 1979. So anyway, this is a book that came from the private collection of Laura Moon, who it has a significant part to play in the history of the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Uh, Laura Moon and Neil Moon spent many years out at the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch, so it's a name that any old-timers from Braddock Bay are very familiar with. In fact, if you look at the educational sign that's out near the boardwalk, we see visit the Laura and Neil Moon Hawkwatch platform to learn more about this topic. So they played such an important role that the Hawkwatch platform is named in their honor. And it's my understanding that Laura passed away a number of years ago and that these books were acquired through an estate sale. And I'm not the biggest book collector, but I think it's fun to have some books where you can tie it to either someone owned it or books that are signed by famous authors, um, you know, field guides signed by Roger Tory Peterson. I used to live at the Lorimer Sanctuary in New Jersey, and they had a large library there, and it was fun to look through the books and see uh, what books had been signed by different famous authors. And we'll conclude the photos by asking who is watching the Watchers, or who is watching the Watcher of the Watchers. Looking at the eBird checklist from today, only 36 species, not really that great of a day just because of those strong winds and very little duck activity. Looking at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 14 turkey vultures, one osprey, one bald eagle, one northern harrier, and four red-tailed hawks for a total of 21 migrant raptors. This brings our April total to 16,356, and the season total to 25,528. There were no new species for the season today, but we did have an Iceland gall, which was a nice species to see kind of later in the season like this. Looking at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy early, then partial clearing later. High up around 50, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so an unfavorable wind direction, and we may end up moving to Frisbee Hill. would only expect light migration. For Friday, it's looking partly cloudy and then mostly cloudy with a few showers. High up around 60, 
and a light northeast lake breeze. So the morning could be okay, but uh, looking like when that lake breeze kicks in, won't be too much migration. Would expect light to moderate migration. That forecast keeps changing, so we'll keep an eye on it. And for Saturday, it's looking rainy. Rain showers in the morning, then steady rain, high in the low 60s. Winds southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So it's a southerly wind, but that rain will probably prevent any raptor flight. Well, wasn't the best day ever for hawks, but a few nice highlights here and there with getting the books and seeing the Iceland gull. There was also a bit of a feeding frenzy out on the bay where there were a bunch of uh, gulls and cormorants and Caspian terns all catching something in the water, so that was interesting to watch. We are coming into the peak broad-winged hawk migration time, and although the next few days don't look that great as of the current forecast, stay tuned and I'll let you know when it's looking better, and I hope to see you out soon at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lycobirds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.